What's up, adventurers? Welcome back. I'm Iman El Zayn. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. And if you're not new here, thank you for tuning in again. You might remember me from training for my first 100 mile race when I brought you new training tips and helpful running advice every single day as I trained for my first 100 miles. Hopefully you found those videos useful and now as I'm training for my second 100 mile race, I wanted to come back and connect with you all again. So today I wanted to share with you a little bit about how to start running. I think starting a run is the hardest part about it. Now, what makes me qualified to talk about running? A lot of running. Also hated running when I first started. I ran my first half marathon and I swore I would never run again. So how did I go from hating every minute of being out there and swearing to never do another mile to training for a hundred and finishing a hundred? Well, hopefully some of the things that I'll be sharing with you today can help you go from mile zero to mile one, because really that's the hardest part. So in this video, we're gonna go over how to start running, some of the gear, essentials, tips and tricks, and uh, techniques for success. First thing, mindset. Mindset is everything. In a 100 mile race, this is cheesy, but we say that you run the first 50 miles with your legs and the second 50 miles with your heart. And that's true. And your heart is really what's powering the mindset. So your mindset is everything. Going from zero to one, it's about getting over that hump. See, most of us, when we think about running, we think back to that mile that you had to do in gym class that sucked, right? Everybody dreaded doing the mile, the mile test. You just think mile, you think running, and you think, please, God, let me have cramps so I don't have to do it. I know that most of my friends, and myself included, thought that we didn't want to do it. So when you're brought up thinking that the mile is like some sort of form of torture, of course you don't wanna run in your free time, but you can get over that. You just have to shift your perspective. And the best way to shift your perspective is figuring out why you're running. So number two, why? Why are you doing it? There are so many reasons why someone would want to run. Losing weight, feeling confident, feeling strong, training for something else. There are a million reasons why, and you gotta figure out what it is for you. I know me personally, I go stir crazy when I'm not running. Running is the best avenue for me to channel all of my excess energy, all of my frustrations, all of my triumphs. I feel so much better every time I run. And when I'm not running, I start to feel kind of crappy. So I know for me, it's essential for my health, my mental health, my well-being. And for you, you've got to figure out what that is and why you're doing it. Once you have that figured out, there are some helpful ways to keep it in mind. And that's going to help again with shifting your mindset. One thing that I like to do is put these little post-it notes on my mirror, reminding me things that will keep me moving forward. This is something that I've taken from uh, David Goggins' book, Can't Hurt Me. David Goggins is a little controversial in the running world. Um, even compared to ultra marathon runners, he's a little, but I love him. I think he's great. Um, he has this technique where he posts, posts it on his mirror and he says really negative things on his post it. I think like, you know, you're letting yourself down. You can't do that. Like, things that you gotta fight back against, um, all of the reasons why you're trying to run, lose weight, feel good, all of those you would put on your mirror. So in the morning when you wake up and you're staring yourself down, you've got all the reasons why you wanna do better that day right there staring back at you. I do something similar. Um, you can also pick a running mantra, something that will push you through those hard days. Like it's just one foot in front of the other or just one day at a time. 
And you could put that on your post-it note and put it on the mirror. Um, Can't Hurt Me is an awesome book. This is something else that helps motivate me is good books. So I have a couple of favorites. If you're trying to get into running, it would be really helpful to download the audio book, listen to the podcast or read it um, while you're starting your training because a little bit of inspiration goes a long way. I have a friend who listens to motivating speeches all the time and he's doing amazing things in life. So I know for me, when I'm trying to convince myself from a new habit or to stop being so lazy or stop watching so much TV, I read a motivating book. Can't Hurt Me, David Goggins is amazing. I will be putting all the links to all of these down below so you can find them easily. Um, the other like go-to for runners is Born to Run. Probably you guys have heard about this one. It's a really, really fun read. Um, and it's got so much good information about running, about one man's journey into running, someone who doctors told would never be a runner. He wasn't built for it. So he went and did research uh, with these runners, the Taramora and the desert of Mexico. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and he's just got some really beautiful stories. So I know that was one of the big books that made me want to go out there and put in the miles. Another book that I really love is Scott Urich's Eat and Run. Um, he's really cool. He's a vegan runner, 100 mile champion from Seattle, or at least he did most of his training in Seattle. Um, he's awesome. I love his book, especially if you're trying to hone in on nutrition, but that might be a step for later down the road. But you can find the links to all those books down below in the comments, uh, in the description. Please check them out and then let me know what you think of them. Number three, gear. So the essentials. I think everyone should start with a running water bottle. Now I use Nathan's running water bottle. I really, I've tried out a couple of different ones and this one is my favorite for the grip. Um, it's handy, it fits your cell phone right in this little zipper pocket. Cell phone and keys fit perfectly in there. It's got the right amount of water. If you're just starting out doing a mile, Maybe you don't need water for a mile, but if you're trying to bump it up to three miles, six miles, I would get one of these. I have a lot of friends that don't run with water, but it's nice to have. If you're getting thirsty out there, you're trying to make the runs as comfortable as possible when you're just getting going. So a running water bottle like this, I like this one because you can just squeeze it and the water comes out. Um, there's a lot on the market, but through some trial and error, this is one that I really like. Then as you start to bump up your training miles, it's time to get a backpack. So again, I use Nathan's running backpack. I put a link down for you guys, but I really find that this one is so comfortable. I forget that I even have it on. You've got your water right here. You can put your cell phone, your nutrition, and we'll talk about all of those things in another video, but it's great. I can just carry everything with me. I don't have to think about it. It's nice and light, it straps on your pack. I'm a big fan of their running backpacks. Watches. So I use the Garmin Forerunner and I love the Garmin Forerunner just because it's reliable, it's solid, it's got a good GPS. There's a lot of other really cool things you can do like program workouts into it, um, which as you get more interested in running, that's something fun that can help you with your training. But for now, just so you can keep track of where you're going, you could use your cell phone, that's easy too, but sometimes it's nice to leave your cell phone behind. Sometimes it's nice not to have to pull it out of your pockets. So that's why the running watch is kind of handy. Number four, accountability. Even more important than the gear is accountability. So that can mean different things for different people, but oftentimes it'll mean a running buddy. And what could be more fun than getting out and spending some time with your best friend, convincing them to suffer with you. That's how I got into running, was by convincing a friend to uh, suffer with me. Um, beware if you're my friend, it can sometimes be dangerous. Um, but you know, running really brings people a lot closer together. It's fun to be out there with people you like. It's fun to make new friends through running. There are a lot of ways to do that. You can join a meetup group. There are pages on Facebook. If you're not looking to make a new running buddy, or you just want to get out there on your own, another way to hold yourself accountable is by signing up for a race. That's right. Making a commitment. 
I know that's scary for a lot of people, but myself being goal oriented, I know that when I have a race to train for, I stick to my training plan. It's a lot harder to throw your run to the wind if you know that not doing your run will mean paying for it later when you're trying to do a race. So signing up for a race, telling people you're going to do a race, all really good ways to hold yourself accountable to yourself and your goals. So now you've picked your race, you've told people you're running, it's time to pick a training plan. I find training plans so useful because once you have made that commitment to start running, sometimes it can be a little tough to figure out, well, how much am I supposed to run every day? And if you have a training plan, it just keeps you right on track and takes all of the guesswork and all of the thinking out of it. And let's be honest, the less we can think about excuses, the more likely we're just going to do the runs. So Hal Higdon is a great place to get running training plans. I will put the links down below for you. He, I've been using his training plans for years now. He's got different levels for novice, intermediate, advanced. Um, they're very straightforward. He's got a great website that talks to you a little bit more about how to follow the training plans. But once you have a training plan, it takes the guesswork out of it. You just do it. Finally, rest and recover. Rest and recover? I thought we were talking about running. We are talking about running. Rest and recovery is so important to running. If you just keep going until you burn out, you're not gonna be doing it anymore. But how do you do that foam rolling? This is a very handy little stick. We've all seen the foam rollers. These are great after a long run or great just to self care after a short run. It helps you get the blood flowing. It helps your body heal itself. You wanna be able to do those runs with the least amount of pain. Otherwise it's not gonna be very much fun. This guy I like because you can be sitting on the couch watching TV and rolling wherever you need it. Super handy. Um, that's gonna keep you uh, hitting the trails, hitting the street. Make sure you're eating right. Make sure you're taking care of your body, your heart, your spirit, because if you're not, running's just gonna feel like another chore. But it shouldn't feel like a chore. It should feel fun. It should feel like it's helping you, not like it's hurting. If you found this useful, don't forget to hit subscribe. I'm gonna be bringing you new training videos every single week and videos as we go down this adventure together. Maybe you're just starting out. Maybe you're trying to ramp up to 100 miles. From mile one to 100, I'm here answering all of your running questions. Feel free to drop them into the comments down below and let me know uh, what tips here helped you the most, if there are any that you found confusing, and I will see you again next week.